This is the future. It's been a great day since morning. We've all been talking about cyber security. And the session we, we just got over, they were discussing around cyber resilience and recovery from disaster. This is, itself shows that you know somehow we've accepted that we are going to be attacked. Isn't it? We know that whatever we do, we are going to be hacked, we are going to be attacked. So let's talk about how we can fight back, how we can recover something which we've already lost. But I think, you know, we need to put some effort how we can avoid this scenario. What really needs to be done? And there's been a bit of work that we've been attempting to do with the customers that we have with the experience of over three decades in other part of the world and then in India about two and a half years, two and a half years that we are here. So there's something that you know we've really realized, the struggle that our industry and our community is facing. In light of this, I'm just trying to, and it's an attempt to talk about how to become proactive in the present scenario. So what is the current reality, if I may, may ask anyone, there are three critical functions in an organization, business, IT, and cyber security. So what is the hard fact that we face among these three functions in terms of priority, which is more prioritized? Any, anything from any one of you, please help me. No guesses even? Please. Out of these three functions of an organization, business, IT, and cyber security, which is given more priority in terms of priority, P1, P2, P3? Business. should be, and actually, if we say that is the reality that we all face, that business has always been the priority. Dhanda chahiye, paisa chahiye. Usse ek saal thoda sa usse piche jata hai, to that is a reason for IT. Because to run business, we need something. We are talking of digitization, we are talking of moving to cloud. So that is just behind it. And something which is, Completely ignored. Agar upar se dekhu to it is two years behind. Finally, it is cyber security, which is completely ignored. And I think this is why today we are frequently gathering to have conversation as to what should we do. We know that that is the hard fact. And then when we go to our management. What is the objection that they put in front of us? Again, any guesses around this? A common objection to, to us when we go to the board and we say that we want to invest in cyber security. What do they say? What's the hurry? Yes. The very common thing that we encounter every day, abhi tak to kuch bhi nahi hua hai. To phir aage kaise hoga? And that is the hard fact. But when we expose them to this fact that see the graph, what is happening today, the incidents and the attacks are increasing day by today, day by day. And we still ignore this. And that's the challenge that we're trying to solve. And how do we solve that problem? So to, to solve that problem, there is something which is required to be done, that is proactiveness. And if I may again ask, I wanted this session to be a little proactive with a limited time. What do we generally understand by the, by the word proactiveness? Sir, any guess? Yes, it's a direct answer to cybersecurity in, in, in a literal term. 
Yeah, I mean it's like closer. It's about you know anticipating the future. You know what is going to happen. Anticipate. That is the little meaning. And in terms of cyber security, it is like we know that what are the risks that we can encounter and prepare against those, those risks today. So that we no more talk about resilience, we no more talk about you know, recovering our data. Things are possible, yes, cannot be 100% guaranteed, but yes, it is possible. And it is possible by way of become, becoming you know, proactive. And again, another question, how do we become proactive? That is very debatable. So what am I going to present here may not be the truth, but it's the learning that we have had over three years in this world. So proactive cybersecurity, there are various pillars that we have identified. The first one is contextualization, context. And I think there is some limited understanding. What do we generally understand by the context? Keeping in mind your industry. Right. I think that's a very relevant answer. So context is actually not limited to yourself. We limit our understanding of the context. Our context is internal, which is me, myself. And then my context is geography where I exist. And then my context is industry, industry where, I, where I play. And then my context is maybe a little beyond that globe. That's also, which is relevant to me. So that's how the context is defined. This is not limited to IT or cyber security. It is overall business context because this is where we analyze why we are prone to threat and what aspect of business is more prone to be attacked. What would be the motive? So that is the real definition of you know, context. Then visibility. So by visibility, what I mean is that, again, anyone, any guesses from the other side, Anyone would like to comment and add to my proposition, please, sir. Because I think you're from financial sector, right, sir? And all of you dominate. You are actually the pioneer, at least in cyber security. And that's where you, you set the benchmark. That's why I thought that I'll get this answer from you. And yes, so uh, by visibility, what do we mean is that we should, why we understand and see our internal assets. We heard you're talking about, you know, understanding your assets. Do you have complete visibility of your endpoints, asset, and all your infrastructure? So that is your internal visibility. But that is not something that we should limit to. We should go beyond this. It is important that we look at the outside world also. We should also have a visibility about ourselves in deep web, dark web, social media. How am I being viewed from outside? What is the charter about myself in the deep web and dark web? What others are talking about me? That helps me generating a complete visibility. 
and hence it is very important factor and way to become proactive. The third pillar is very, very important. We may have invested a lot in technology. You may buy any tool. We may digitize. But if our people are not aware, they do not know how to make use of technology, they'll keep on committing those mistakes. And we get breached. So simply investing in technology doesn't work. People has to be a part of this, their awareness. And the security program reviews, do we really have a cyber security function? Who is heading that function? Are we having adequate policies in place? We might have adequate policies in place, but are people adhering to those policies or not? If we have implemented something, is it properly implemented? Is it properly configured or not? So these reviews, again, play a very significant role. And last and not, but not the least, that is threat hunting and vulnerability management. We should keep hunting the threat. We should keep analyzing our vulnerabilities. And while we understand all these pillars, it has to be understood in two parameters. So first one is comprehensiveness. I was just having a, a very close year on the conversation and I think this was something which came about. That assets to hai, but sorry assets have cover kiye ki nahi kiye. Sorry endpoints have cover kiye ki nahi kiye. When we are training people, have we taken in, into account all the people or not? So comprehensiveness is very important, not in terms of only context, visibility, people awareness, reviews. So it should cover all. And the second is continuous. How frequently are we analyzing this? How frequently we are conducting this, or this exercise within the organization? And that's when I see that, you know, there is a way that we can move towards proactiveness. It is a very, very comprehensive and it's a very, very big approach. Cannot be achieved immediately. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that's a very good question. To analyze this, it is very important that how well have you orchestrated your, uh, your, your, your tools of cyber security that you have deployed. For example, the security operation center. It's very common, most of the people are having it. But the common understanding is SIM. I have seen, they say that it's a SOC. But that doesn't end here. Again, it needs to be complete, comprehensive, which means that it should be in SIM, SOAR, UEBA, NBD, everything, because that correlation has to happen, right? If an incidence is happening at the endpoint, it should be correlated from any anomalous behavior at your network. And again, if this is happening, it should not be limited to your uh, limited use case and playbooks, because there are unknown threats. Now, how do we identify unknown threats? Coming to another point of visibility is data protection. A very common uh, way and approach is to deploy something only at the end point and make all those controls. But it doesn't work. Here, the visibility comes when you understand that where your data is residing how are you identifying your data, whether all your data is discovered or not, who is accessing your data, how it is automatically classified without any human intervention, do you have visibility around this or not, and who is accessing it, where is he transferring the data. So that's another critical area. Yes.
and, and you know this will be achieved when you understand your context and with the constant visibility of the external world. As I was talking about the threat hunting, so that predictive will come from threat hunting model as well as understanding what is going on in the deep web and dark web. And that has to be very continuous. If you do it continuously and comprehensively, your purpose gets solved. So does that answer your question? Thank you. <laughs> and you know, this is to summarize that proactiveness is a journey. We cannot achieve it immediately. It requires a bit of effort and, and a phased manner that you can do it. But yes, our belief is that if we follow this approach, we can actually minimize the probability of attack and we can be safe. Thank you so much. <laughs>